Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Grace Eternacrills. I'm just going to keep shortening the name until I'm comfortable saying it. Yes, the Grace Eternacrills Adventures. We're in the last case of the first game, and we just got through one piece of it. So, um, yeah. Uh, to be quite honest, I'm a little, uh, sleep deprived right now. Um, that's nothing new. I'm, I'm constantly, perpetually st sleep deprived, but, um, I'm feeling it a little more than usual lately. Nevertheless, I really wanted to make some progress. So let's get back in there. It's time for part two of the investigation of episode 5, The Adventure of the Unspeakable Story. Let's go, and boy, do I hope I am not too rusty with the voices I made up. I actually tried to take a look at some of the old stream to try to remember what people sound like. Oh god, right away with the girls. I have trouble with the girls, kind of. See? That's why I hate grown-ups. All they do is feed you a pack of lies and take stuff away from you. Oh really, Miss Lestrade? Tell me, is that overcoat keeping you warm? What? Oh my, surely you were given that. Yeah, the D let me keep it, after I looked daggers at him for long enough. I went through the pockets and then say, Go on then, have it before you turn me to scarper. Always pays off giving people a look like you hate them. I can't help feeling it's gonna get you into serious trouble one day. What I really wanted was that nice shiny disc mine. The music box disc. Mr. Winniebank said it was practically worthless. I think I'm gonna go and have another bash. Give him a long hard stare. I think not, Mr. Strahd. We shan't have a, we shan't enter Windybanks again today. Why not? That's not fair. It can't be helped, I'm afraid. The police are investigating the scene now and taking a statement from Mr. Windybank. I really like that she like did a little glance over to me as I was starting to talk. That's such a good little thing. That's awesome. But that this mine! I did take it for his coat and it was in this coat's pocket. There should be something else in all. That's what that rotten co said, ain't it? Yes, he did mention something about another article, didn't he? Well, then that's mine too. Whatever it is. Now she's really pushing her luck. Mr. Strahd, I think it's time to admit defeat. You've had your hole for the day. Yeah, it's all your fault, Shones. So what are your plans now? You dine with us this evening. Uh, Irish would be delighted to cook, I'm sure, and I'm and I might entertain you with a modest violent recital. Time for Sundere Gina. No. Ta. Oh. Oh. I thought she said ta as though, like, she was saying ta-ta to leave, but I guess that's not a thing? I've never heard that phrase used this way. Why don't I come around your place, huh? Have you, lo have you lost your head or something? Whoa! Okay, she actually was angling to leave. Oh dear, she's gone. Hmm. That reviled on me quite unnecessarily, I might add. I can't help wondering if perhaps she might turn up anyway. Interesting. Once she's had a chance to calm down, I think there's a good chance she'll decide to come. Very well then. I'll inform Iris to set a place for our potential guest at the dinner table this evening. And one more thing. I should be glad of your company later, too. Sorry? I believe I will have a rather splendid surprise to show you. Oh, how exciting! What is it? 
you have to wait and see, Mr. Sato. Until later, then. Alright. Uh, we've already looked at pretty much everything out here, I think. Yeah, I don't look if there's anything different about this area. And thankfully, the check marks remain. That's awesome. That's good game programming. Alright. No need to examine here. Let's get out of this place. Um, let's go back to our room first. I think the Sholmes' suite is when we will actually have some prog progress. But I just want to check real quick. What's going on here? What should we do, Miss Sato? Can it really be that we've been in Great Britain for two months already? Yes, it's gone by in a flash, hasn't it? What an English gentleman you've... You trailed off there, Sato-san. I'm so sorry. When I thought it through, I realized it's not at all true, actually. I simply don't feel that any Britishness has really rubbed off on you. Nor are you, to be honest. Well, well, that's obviously because... Yes, I know. Without a doubt, it's your kimono. It most certainly stands out. I do adore the attire of English ladies. It's quite delightful. But somehow, I just don't feel ready to abandon my Japanese dress just yet. I wonder how sad to sound looking Western clothes. That'd be interesting to see. Is that DLC? It might be one of them DLC costumes already. It seems like they're very conspicuously talking about that possibility. Um, do I have anything new to present you? No, we've already talked about Cosmo. Wait, hold on. I meant to move. I'm sorry. All right, up into Sholmes's or down to Sholmes's suite we go. Actually, hold on a second. Alright. Alright. Sorry, I was checking the stream audio for just a second. Ah, Susie! Aruno! Come in, come in! Good afternoon, Iris. Thank you so much for breakfast this morning. Oh, don't mention it! Goodness, look at the time already! Busy as always? I am. I'm preparing everything for dinner this evening. Already? You're obviously cooking something special, are you? Oh, that's an odd way to phrase that. You're obviously cooking something special, are you? Oh, yes. After all, we have a special guest joining us. Guess who it is? Go on. <laughs> You'll never guess. Um. Look at those little eyes of her shining. She's supposed to be really cute, but I'm voicing her. Oh dear. It is awkward when you already know the answer, isn't it? It's Ginny! Is that exciting? Oh. Uh, oh, what a surprise! Yes, that's wonderful news! Wow, Iris seems overjoyed at the idea. I can't wait to learn some pickpocketing tips from a real professional! Oh yes, that does sound like fun. I'm not sure that's entirely appropriate. Are you Mr. Narhodo? Uh, uh, by the way, Iris, what's Mr. Shum's up to? Is he depressed again? Early? Oh, he's been like that ever since he got back. Hello, Mr. Shum's. I beg that you won't speak to me. Sorry. I don't know who you are, but kindly take your leave. As you can see, I'm... Wait, hold on. Sorry, I thought it switched to Rinosuke. As you can see, I'm not here. I... I don't know how to respond to that. 
I do apologize. When it gets like this, he's completely oblivious to everything. Yes, I see. Really, he behaves just like a child sometimes, Hurley does. Mr. Sholmes and Iris have something of a parent and child relationship, don't they? Yes, except that Iris is clearly the parent here. Don't think of it. I wonder where her real parents are. Mm. Well, if I remember right, one of the victims in our very... Wasn't the victim in our very, very first case a John Wilson? I wonder if they're going to make that connection here in this game. What's the matter, Runo? You've ever such a funny look on your face. Oh, no, it's, uh, nothing. I know what it is. Why does this girl live here with Mr. Sholmes, you're wondering? Am I right? How, how'd you... <laughs> oh, Runo, I can read you like a book. Ugh, this girl's dangerous. Don't worry, you can ask me anything. I won't mind. Alright, can we just, like, ask you? Hey. Well, first off, let's see what Mr. Shums is doing. Oh, we can examine his violin, which is supposed to be, like, back. Now, this really is Mr. Shums' faithful performing partner, then. The Stravidet. The Strapiscar. The Scrapifarious. The... Monstro Nimblo Salafasgoso. No, it's no good. It's gone. The virtuoso's violin that he found in a pawnbroker's and managed to buy for next to nothing. After all we went through to get it back, he's just cast it aside on that chair. I was looking forward to hearing the beautiful sound it makes when Mr. Sholmes plays it. It does look rather sorry for itself there, doesn't it? Although, at least Wagahai hasn't attacked it yet. Even if his eyes are saying it's only a matter of time. Reminder to all, Wagahai is the cat. It's a calico that lives with them now. Alright, Sholmes, what's up? So, Mr. Sholmes, what are you so engrossed in? Did you not hear? I am not here. Of course you're not. I cannot think why the whole bed of the ocean is not one solid mass of oysters, so prolific the creatures seem. Ha. Huh. You won't even turn around and look at me. It's best just to leave him alone and when he's in one of his moods like this. Yes, I can see that. Okay. Is there anything new on this side of the room that I haven't noticed before? No, I don't think so. Alright, we're, we're, we're fine. Alright, Iris, let's talk about your stuff. So, by Ginny, you mean Miss Lestrade, the young woman from the McGilda case two months ago, right? Yes. Who also stole my experimental smoke grenade launcher. Although, after that trial, I invited her back here and we had dinner together. And now we're the best of friends. Oh, what a lovely tale. Yes, now if I bump into her on the street, she runs away as fast as she can. Oh. Now I chase after her down the back alleys. Interesting idea of friendship. And then I let her have the- and then I let her have the latest color of smoke grenade I've developed. Oh. There's so many beautiful colors in the world. Ginny wants me to make a whole rainbow. I suppose this means you've let Miss Lestrade keep the smoke grenade launcher, have you? Yes, that's right. I got bored of it anyway. Hurley always reacts the same way when I shoot him with it now. Poor Hurley. Oh, I can't wait for Ginny to arrive. It's been too long since she last came over. I'm so excited. I just hope she does actually come. 
Alright, what's up with living with Sholmes, man? I'm sure you've been wondering why it is that I live here with Hurley, haven't you? Well, it has crossed my mind. That and... Where are your real parents? Uh-oh. My mummy and daddy aren't with me anymore. Mummy passed away when I was born. And at around the same time, my father... Well, he had to go to a faraway land because of one of the cases he and Hurley were working on. Oh. Wait a minute. Did you say he and Hurley? Yes. Daddy and Hurley were always solving mysterious cases together. She didn't mention that before. He wrote them all up in his diaries. That's what's in the metal chest over there. Really? He recorded them all? So, you mean it's true? Mr. Sholmes really did have a partner with whom he tackled some of his most taxing cases. Oh yes, I mean, it's always nice to have one, isn't it? So Mr. Sholmes' partner was your father? Exactly. Tully told me I wasn't allowed to look in the chest. That only made me want to look even more. So I opened it up. And found your father's memoirs. Yes. So I asked Hurley, Who wrote these? He nearly fell off his chair. But then he told me, That's when I found out that the author of all those accounts was my father. So Iris's father was Mr. Sholmes' partner. I've practically lived with Hurley all my life. I was tiny when he took me in. So, it came as quite a shock when Hurley told me he wasn't really my daddy, I mean. It must have done. I wonder why Mr. Sholmes chose to tell you, and at such a young age. Hurley says it's because he wouldn't have been able to hide it from me. Oh? Well, having lived with Hurley all these years, you might say that his ways have rubbed off on me. There's some things I can just... see. Especially lies. I almost know when people are lying before they open their mouths sometimes. Right. Anyway, I was so fascinated when I read Daddy's diaries. That's what inspired me to write The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes, actually. I'd always assume Mr. Shum simply told you all those thrilling stories. Oh no, Hurley's hopeless like that. He forgets everything. As soon as he solved the case, it all, it all but vanishes from his mind. Oh, I see. The other day it was so embarrassing. As usual, he totally forgot about the case he just solved. So the very next day, he gathered together all the people involved and proceeded to solve the case again. It was quite a shock for everyone. You can say that again. You share your father's surname, don't you, Iris? That's right. Wilson. Daddy is Dr. John H. Wilson. I learnt from his diaries that he's a doctor of medicine, you see. That's what prompted me to study and study so that I could earn a doctorate as well. Iris's father, who went to some distant land, and is a doctor by the name of John H. Wilson. Black. The court will now hear the trial of Yunosuke Naruhodo. I think that's how he sounded at the time. I can't remember anymore. It's been quite some time since I voiced this judge. Kindly state before the court the name of the victim in this case. The victim's name is... was Dr. John H. Wilson. That's right. Visiting professor of medicine at Imperial Yume University. And the man who... 
in the most bizarre of circumstances, lost his life just before we left Japan. Mrs. Sato. Yes. Perhaps we shouldn't pursue this conversation any further at this time. I think that would be for the best. Ah, my dear fellows, how good to see you. E uh, Mr. Sholmes. Why ever did you not make your presence known to me before? Well, that was a bunch of extra syllables. Why ever did you not make your presence known to me before? Huh? Well, no matter now. So, how the devil are you? We've been with you for most of the day. Goodness, really? Do tell me, Mr. Sholmes, is your violin unscathed? Hmm? My violin? Whatever are you talking about, dear madam? Oh, um, never mind that now. I have something far more interesting to show you. Behold, my dear fellows. Oh, another music box disc. No, not another disc, Mr. Sato. This is the one Gregson demanded we hand over as evidence. Mr. McGilded's disc. Oh my. Then, then, uh, what's it doing here? <laughs> you know, at times, Mr. Nadahodo, I think that though I have an undeniable turn for detection, I may well be even more adept at larceny. Ooh, that would be wonderfully exciting. I'd be your pickpocketing assistant. And Runo could be our go-to lawyer if we ever got caught. Right. Plus, Susie has such beautiful handwriting, she can write all our menacing crime notifications. Yes, I'd be delighted. What the hell, Susato? I'm just gonna pretend this conversation never happened, I think. And then she nods at me. <laughs> yeah, you, you do that. You just forget. Alright, music box disc. Let's go. I, I don't understand. How did that disc come to be in your possession? I thought Inspector Gregson took it back to Scotland Yard. Quite correct. And that sort of uncompromising attitude is precisely why I always carry some of this. That's a bar of caramel, Mr. Sholmes. Your one and only friend in times of loneliness, so I'm not mistaken. If you'll humor me, my dear fellows, cast your minds back to when the good detective confiscated the disc. I'll be taking that whatever it is of McGillis down to the yard, thank you very much. So hand it over. Oh, yes, of course. The police demand something as evidence, my dear fellow. We have no choice but to capitulate. It's all yours, Inspector. For the briefest of moments, I had the disc in my hand, did I not? Yes. Yes, you did. But, I still don't understand. It was at precisely that moment that I summoned my one and only friend into action. I pressed the disc into a pair of bars, like this. That's... that's amazing. The disc and all the minuscule protrusions have made an image in the caramel. Indeed. Oh, wait a minute. Did I just read... I, I just read Rinosuke, didn't I? Yeah, that, that's amazing. The disc and all the minuscule protrusions have made an image in the caramel. Indeed, this caramel is quite exceptional. I developed it myself, you know. Suitably soft for making impressions, but resistant to melting. The result of a precisely controlled solution. How extraordinary. Carrying a pair of these on one's person frequently proves very useful indeed. Take a house key, for example. A simple press and its unique form is duplicated. I can enter anyone's property at will, and never without high sucrose nourishment. Yes, it sounds... illegal. From the image, I was able to create this. I confess I was most curious to know what manner of music would issue from the disc when it played. 
Do we have a player for it? Do tell us then, Mr. Sholmes. What music does the disc play? Well, unfortunately, I have no idea. No idea? None whatsoever. Are you familiar with the workings of a music box, my dear fellows? No, I'm afraid not. Goodness! You don't know, Runo! Inside a music box is a special metal piece called a comb. That's what produces the sound. Small protuberances pluck the different teeth of the comb as they rotate past it, making the different notes. The first music box was to be invented using a rot used a rotating cylinder with protuberances on it. That all felt so Professor Layton. This music too. But over time, a new type of player was produced, which used discs such as these. With that development, the, pro the popularity of music boxes spread far and wide, all around the globe. Why exactly? Because the discs are easy to produce, because the discs are easy to produce and can be interchanged to facilitate the playing of different tunes. There are a great many firms in Europe now manufacturing music boxes as a result. It is wonderful to be able to enjoy music even when no performer is present. What a novel idea. Enjoying music without a live performer. That's crazy. <laughs> But it is the very success of the invention that means we are now presented with an insurmountable problem. What do you mean? As you may imagine, the construction of one, of one firm's music box does not match that of another. And we have no way of knowing in which music box this particular disc was designed to be played. There's no resolution to this problem, I'm afraid. It's quite intractable. Ah, I see. So that's why. Naturally, I tested the disc in those few music boxes I have at my disposal. But as you can hear, to no avail. The results were equally unsatisfactory in this one. So, I am presently engaged in acquiring an example of all the music boxes ever made in Europe. Every single one? That's early for you. Always taking things too far. But, my dear girl, an unsolved riddle is quite repugnant to my constitution. But surely all the different types in Europe will amount to a huge volume of music boxes, won't it? Hmm. Yes, that is certainly true. In the worst case, I shall just have to ask you to vacate the attic room. What? <laughs> That's the end of the conversation. Magnus McGilded. Not a name I expected to hear again so soon. Yes. It's only been two months since that grisly... Ugh. It's only been two months since that grisly case. Where he burned alive in a bus. Or an omnibus. Mr. McGilded perished within hours of the trial's... Within hours of the trial's conclusion. <laughs> His face! Was it the curse of the Reaper? No one knows. Still now. This expression is ridiculous. I don't know what to make of it. The omnibus was reduced to a pile of ash. Not a shred of evidence remained. And with the man's death... The truth about the murder in which he was so intimately involved was buried. You gotta go a little faster, text. I can't keep up with this and perform. Or I could just wait. I should probably just wait. Even though we successfully established Mr. McGilded's innocence in the trial, the newspapers are still claiming that it remains an unsolved case. Oh wow, all the pictures are coming back. The murder of the brickmaker, Mr. Thrice Fired Mason. In the end, the truth of the matter remains a mystery. We still have no idea what really happened that night. And 
and although Mr. McGilda was found not guilty through my defense, I still don't know if that was right judgment or not. Oh, look at him snickering at us from beyond the grave. It would appear the case is not yet closed. Well, it's time I started getting things ready for dinner, I think. Jeannie will be here before too will be here before long. Thank you, Iris. Oh, well you must let me help you then. Of course, Susie. There's plenty to do. I think I shall I shall investigate the condition of my faithful performing partner. Now then, where did I leave it? Let this be a lesson to you, Mr. Sholmes. Never leave anything too precious with the pawnbroker. Hm. Yes, you may be right. Oh, that reminds me of something Mr. Windybank said before. He said that he had a manuscript of irises in pawn, didn't he? Did he? Yes, he definitely mentioned it. Mr. Sholmes' latest tale of otherworldly mystery lies dormant in my storeroom, were his words, I believe. So you heard about that, did you? I expect you as incensed as I was. Oh, yes, the idea of such a wonderful story languishing in Mr. Winniebank's storeroom, gathering dust. My dear madam, I'm quite sure I told you already. The pawnbroker's storeroom is the safest place for it, more secure than a bank's vault. And what about your Stradivarius, Hurley? Was that safe and secure? Well, there may be the occasional mix-up. Caused by a certain impetuous someone not too far from me now. Do you have any idea how long it took me to write that Baskerville story, Hurley? Oh, it sounds so exciting. The Hound of the Baskervilles. She wrote the Hound of the Baskervilles? That's the one that's sitting in the storeroom? But, uh, okay. So, the lore here is that her dad passed away and she's been writing, like, all of the Sholmes' or all of the home stories. That's pretty nuts, man. I should love to read it. Ah. I'm actually pretty confused myself. What what what's going on here? Why does it feel like an icy chill just swept through the room? Nanyo Konokuki ga. Susie, what did you just say? Um You said the Hound of the Baskervilles. But... How could you know the full title? Well... That's... That's because Mrs. Sato is such a great fan of all the stories about Mr. Sholmes, of course. <laughs> that look! <laughs> but Runo, the Hound of the Baskervilles has never been published. What? When I showed Hurley the manuscript, he told me that I wasn't allowed to publish it yet. I don't understand. That's why he said that he'd keep it safe. Until it was the right time for the story to be made public, you see. So that's why the manuscript is at Windy Banks? And yet, how could Susie here know its title? Well, Hurley, what's going on? Ah. What is it, Mr. Sholmes? It would appear our guest has arrived. <laughs> Miss Lestrade.
This was a bad idea. I know I weren't welcome. I'm going. Whoa! No, wait! Mr. Strahd! We've all been eagerly awaiting your arrival. To break this awkward silence. And to cover up the fact that Sasato totally stole that manuscript, you crazy... What, what's wrong with you? Haven't we, Iris? Oh, yes. Just wait here, Ginny. We'll have everything ready in a jiffy. Come along, Susie. Uh, right. Of course. It's a pleasure to see you here, Miss Lestrade. Please, make yourself at home. Don't stand in the doorway, my dear girl. Come along in. What say you to some Mendelssohn? I won't take no for an answer. Meddlesome it is, then. <laughs> the kitty. Yeah. What's his name? Wagahai. Meow. It's a lot of it's a lot of vowels in there. That evening, Iris prepared a solemn meal that was even more delicious than usual. Mr. Sholmes' violin performance was in no way meddlesome, and Gina, as we came to call her, taught us all how to steal things from one another without being noticed. Everyone thoroughly enjoyed themselves well into the night. Hmm. That was a very enjoyable evening, wasn't it? Oh yes, Iris's cooking was truly divine. I feel as though I can still hear the enchanting strains of Mr. Sholmes' violin even now. Best of all, I bet I could steal the glasses from his lordship's face next time we're in court. Hmm. Naruhodo-san, could I consult with you about something, I wonder? What's the matter, Sasato-san? It's about the telegram I received. Oh yeah, she got a telegram! And I, she didn't allow me to read it. I f totally forgot about that. Ah. One that arrived first thing this morning, I suppose. I've... I've been summoned. What? Summoned? What do you mean? The telegram was from the Lord Chief Justice's office. Lord Strongheart has asked to see me. The Lord Chief Justice? When? Tomorrow morning. What? Th then we have to start preparing at once. Oh, no. That won't be necessary, Narahodo-san. I've been summoned alone. Alone? What on earth for? I have no idea. I suppose I shall find out tomorrow. What's all this about? Whatever it is, it's making me feel very uneasy. Knock knock. Ah, oh, who could that be, I wonder? Good evening, friends. Ah, Iris. Hello again. You know I'm here too. It's me, Gina, looking all sour. And Gina too. Yes, Gina's going to stay with us tonight. She's going to sleep in with me. Oh boy. So, if anyone heard that awful shrieking, it's because there's a car in my neighborhood that just sounds like that. It sounded like that for years, and they refused to fix it. It's crazy. Stop it! Anyway. Isn't that right, Ginny? Well... Yeah. How lovely. Let me make a pot of tea. You know, I've learned so much today. Oh, what in particular? All those things Ginny showed us. Wasn't it wonderful? Ah, you mean all those pickpocketing techniques. We had fun trying them out on each other, didn't we? 
I think I've awakened a natural talent. I could, I could earn a living from it. You might be getting ahead of yourself a little there. So, what brings you up to our humble quarters at this late hour? Well, you see... I came to return this. Wait, what? That, that's mine! Oh my! However did you... I told you, didn't I? I have a natural talent for it. Oh yes, I'd forgotten. Iris literally is a child genius. Honto no tensai desu. So anyway, here. You can have it back. Not that I really understand why you wear it, though. Ah, thank you. Alright then. Good night. Yes, good night. She's still sour about the manuscript. Hmm. So this is your office, is it? What do you think, Ginny? I think I won't find so many chances with the lawyer what lives in a place like this. Yes, me too. <laughs> Damn, they just came to roast me. It seems as though Iris here still has something she'd like to talk about. I suppose she probably wants to talk about the manuscript. Yes, I suppose she probably does. Okay. Before we do that, though. Oh. Bruno, what are you doing? Look, I'm not gonna steal nothing, alright? It's all junk anyway. Charming. I suppose she can engage our guests in conversation, really. Okay. Yeah, that's everything. Oh, I can take a moment to talk to her specifically. Hey, is that books? Gina looks very pensive over there. Are you alright, Gina? Huh? Just thinking, that's all. I wouldn't fancy me chances with a lawyer that lives in a place like this. You said that already. Yes, you didn't mention it. Okay, good. Get off. Did I? Well, nothing else really springs to mind, that's why. What's wrong with this room exactly? I like it. Alright. And I probably won't get anything more from her until I have the proper conversation. With her. Iris, I... I suppose you're hoping to talk about the manuscript, aren't you? Aren't you going to tell me? I'm so sorry. I need a little more time, please. All right, I understand. I hope I haven't made you feel awkward. Oh, no, not at all, Iris. Not at all. I don't know what all this is about, really, but... It's a story you made up, is it, I... It, it's a story you made up, is it, Iris? This mental script, or whatever you call it. It's not exactly a story that I'm... Wait, hold on. What am I doing? It's not exactly a story that I made up. It's something that I read in Daddy's diaries. Daddy's? That's right. I don't suppose I've mentioned it to you before, Ginny, but... My Daddy was Hurley's assistant once. His partner. Huh? They solved all sorts of strange and mysterious cases together. It... Is that right, mister? Apparently so. I was as surprised as you are, though. And Daddy wrote all the details of every single case down, you see, in his diaries. So I studied them and wrote my stories based on what actually happened. 
So, where's your man now then? He had to go away on urgent business to faraway land, and he'll be gone for a very long time. So, I've never really met him. Oh, right. Come to think of it. I don't know anything about Gina's parents either. Perhaps we should ask her. Iris, this Hound of the Baskervilles story. I take it that it's another tale inspired by your father's accounts. That's right. I thought it was fascinating. But it's different somehow. From the other cases, I mean. Oh? Oh. I don't really know, but it must be special in some way. Because after I've, after I've written it and I showed the manuscript to Hurley, he turned as white as a sheet. It was the first time I've ever seen him like that. It pains me to have to say this after you've toiled over it for so long, Iris. But this story must not be published at this time. Under any circumstances. But why not? It's one of my best works! I'm not at liberty to say. Not now. So please, do not ask me. All right then, I won't. But I do solemnly swear that I will explain everything one day, Iris, when the time is right. And that's how the manuscript came to be with Mr. Windybank, isn't it? Yes. Hurley said it had to be somewhere very safe. That really gets my gut. It that that does. He's treating you like a child. It's mean, that's what it is, keeping secrets like that. I'm sure Mr. Sholmes isn't trying to be mean. Huh? If he said he wasn't at liberty to talk about it, I'm sure there must have been a very good reason. I think so too. You lot are too trusting for your own good. We can't pull the wool over my eyes. Shams is lying, Iris. I bet my life on it. What? Hurley's lying to me. Oh, that's a weird tone, like note to end on. I'm not sure I like that. Let's talk to Gina now that we've talked about her parents. I realize that I don't know anything about your parents, Gina. And I demand to know because I'm entitled to this information. I ain't got any, have I? Never did have. Oh. Look, the East End's full of orphans like me. No one wants nothing to do with us from the minute we're born. Not even our mums. But we all stick together. The older ones look after the little ones and make sure they get by. So that's why you're a pickpocket. Nah. Darwin's my life. I love it. I get a kick out of it every time I lift some pompous idiot's purse. And that's how we all afford to eat. I'm like Robin Hood, ain't I? That's how I see it. Oh, Gina. I do think about it sometimes, what it'd be like to have parents, I mean. I always thought it might make, make everything... I always thought it make everything right. I haven't listened to what I was just said. Sounds like having parents ain't always easy either. Oh. I mean, if you know you never had them, you don't feel like you're always wanting to meet them.
It's true. I do want to see Daddy. So much. Oh, Iris. That really sucks, though. Shh. I hate... Oh, God. He's not... He's not alive anymore. This is sad. And again, Ace Attorney games are no stranger to being pretty sad sometimes. That's sad, though. Gina, what did you mean when you said that you know Mr. Sholmes is lying to Iris? Oh, he reckons he popped that mantle script or whatever, right? Come on, that's obviously a low rubbish. Oh my, wh why would you think that, Gina? It's simple. If that store was really an old Windy Bank storeroom, there's no way some from halfway around the world, and in other words, you, could know about it. Ah. Sorry, Iris, but if you ask me, he sold it. Without telling you. But Hurley would never do something like that. I'm sure of it. Ha! <laughs> Grown ups do a lot worse than that, believe me. Barefaced liars, a lot of them. You just ain't realized it yet. I'm telling you, that mantle script ain't at Windybanks. You s you'd soon see if you had a look. Even if you think you can trust them, I don't. That Shums is a liar like the rest of them. If I'm honest, I have wondered if Hurley's telling me the truth sometimes. See? Oh, but I don't mean that I think he sold it. I mean that I sometimes wonder if he might have hidden my manuscript somewhere. Somewhere I don't know. Even though it's wrong of me to doubt him. Don't be too hard on yourself, Iris. Oh my goodness, look at the time! Come along, Ginny. We should go back downstairs. Yeah, alright. And please, don't mention any of this to Hurley, will you? No, of course not. Good night, then, Iris. Good night, Gina. You must let me make breakfast for you tomorrow morning. I insist. Oh, yes, please. I can't wait, Susie. Good night, then. Iris, it sure is easy to forget, isn't it? Sometimes she speaks just like an adult. But deep down, she's still just a child. Well, I think it's time that I turn in for the night too, Minnarahodo san. Dr. John H. Wilson. Iris' father, but also the name of the murdered visiting professor at Yume University. It can't be a mere coincidence. There's something deeper going on. So many ellipses. Stunarhodo. That voice. That's Mr. Sholmes. What's going on? It's the middle of the night. It's Miss Lestrade. She's gone. Gina? She was supposed to be sleeping in Iris' room, but her bed is empty. Well, she's an independent young woman. She probably decided to go home, no? 
I think not. From speaking to her before she retired, I received the distinct impression that she was looking forward to breakfasting with Mrs. Sato. No, I don't believe the girl's gone home. But I've been waiting for over an hour now. Over an hour? Oh. If you'll indulge me, look out of the window, my dear fellow. What's this about? <laughs> Wait a minute. Why is there a light on at this time of night? That's Mr. Windybank's pawn brokery. Mr. Windybank's... Oh no. It's simple. If that story was really in old Mr. Windybank's storeroom... There's no way some from halfway, halfway around the world, in other words, you, could know about it. Or could know about it. Sorry, Iris, but if you ask me, he sold it. Without telling you. Could Gina have gone? It seems you have some knowledge of the situation, Mr. Nadahodo. Sorry? Oh, no. No, not really. Well, anyway, we must investigate. At once. Or at once. Miss Sato. Alright, let's go. Door to Windy Banks. It's open. And the lamp is burning. It must be Gina, mustn't it? Let us hope it's nothing more sinister. What? Come, there's not a moment to lose. Clearly, something is afoot inside. There's no one here. Oh, yes. There is. What? Ah, says Sato. Mr. Sholmes! Mr. Sholmes! What the? Sholmes been shot? Leave me, Mr. Narahodo. But, after them. Go. Right. Blast. Hold on a second. Alright, sorry. I, I, I got paranoid for just a second. I needed to check my stream audio. Blast! I've lost him. Hello, hello, where are we? Oh, wait. It's a brand new guy. Hello, hello, where are we? The alarm was just raised from this pawnbroker, sir. Would you know something about that? Officer, uh, come with me. It's my friend, Mr. Sholmes. He's been shot. Shot? With the policeman close behind me, I ran back to Windybanks. Oh. That's a fascinating way to introduce a scene. Oh, it's anime again. Mr. Jones. Mr. Narado. How bad is it? Uh, never mind me, but there's much at stake. Behind that door. Uh, uh, In the storeroom. Uh, hurry. <laughs> oh shit, Windy Bank is dead. What? Uh, it's Gina. What?
What was that? Oh, shit. Well, that was a very short chapter. Ah, uh, it was a short chapter, but it's... Hmm. I've been kind of I've been kind of liking the chapter break um like one chapter break per stream setup it it makes the progress pretty clean and easier to track and eventually I should really get in there and start putting some timestamps inside the description so that it'll section off um well I know it's only been an hour but I kind of don't want to start a new part and end up, like, stopping in the middle of something crazy just because I can't hack it anymore and I'm lo and I'm falling asleep. So, um, I guess I'll just call it here for today. Um, yeah, it's only an hour, but, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's okay. It's okay. I'll just pick this up perhaps some other day. Um, if I'm lucky, maybe tomorrow. But, um, yeah, I guess uh, that's it for tonight. Thank you, everyone, who's been uh, checking in on these streams and following along. Hope my acting... There's so many girls in this... Uh, or uh, There's so much female voice action in this um, episode that um, it's tough. It's tough for it's tough for me. Hopefully it's not too bad. Hopefully it's not too bad. But anyway. Uh I guess I'll see you guys at the next stream or the next video or whatever it is that you guys are checking out on this channel. And if you are checking things out on this channel, thank you very much as always for watching. We will see you next time. Goodbye, good night everyone. Have a wonderful weekend when you get there. Because technically it is Thursday night, right? And um, take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Goodbye, everybody. Good night.